G'day, today we're going to be removing the bearings from my trailer here. It's just a standard 750 kilo unbraked trailer. We'll go through how to determine the axle type, whether it's a Holden or a Ford, to determine the bearings we're going to buy. We'll go through how to clean them, how to fit the new ones and how to adjust them. And we'll get started by putting it on these stands. We'll get the wheel off. All right, I've just got the axle off the ground here. Um, I've just got it supported on two stands in each corner. Just make sure it's safe before you get underneath it. Just going to take a quick measurement here between the studs. The distance between two adjacent studs will tell us what hub we've got. We also want to know the size of the stud. In this case, I've got half inch. That gives me an idea that this is a Ford hub. And measuring the axle here, telling us we've got a 39 millimeter round axle, tells us we've got a Holden axle. And that'll determine what sort of bearings we buy, but we'll check the bearing part numbers anyway. We'll get the wheel off. I'm just going to rattle it off here, get it out the way and then we can proceed to remove the hub cap and then we can get to the cotter pin and the nut. Removing the hub cap, I've just got a very blunt chisel here. You don't want anything too sharp. It's just a bit of a rounded chisel. We can just tap it off. They're not tight. Um, just get it off in one side, spin it around, tap the other side off like I've done here. Normally full of old grease. We'll clean that out later. And uh, when we refit it, it'll be all full of clean grease. All right, removing the cotter pin is pretty straightforward. Just straighten it out as tidily as you can and pull it out from the other side with a pair of pliers. Um, I like to keep the old cotter pin. They're, they're handy to keep if you can straighten them out enough that they're, they're not too distorted. Uh, you can either reuse them if you're going to repack the bearings or you can just keep them as a spare because all the bearing kits will come with a new cotter pin. Once we get the nut off, just keep all that aside, keep it clean and we can pull the whole hub off the axle assembly. All right, so with the hub off, now is our best chance to look at the bearings, identify what bearings we need to replace them with, if we do need to replace them. Uh, I'm definitely going to now. It looks like we've had some, some moisture ingress and, and other things like that. Well, there's certainly no rocket science here. We're just going to knock the uh, outer inner, inner cup out along with the seal. There we go. I suppose there's them there. Pretty ugly looking grease, but that's okay. It's been in there for a long time. It's, it still has grease, which is good. There's no failure. Um, let's have a look at these. We'll clean them up. Okay, so we've got both the bearings out of the uh, hub now. Now these are the LM part numbered bearings, which are the Holden bearings. And this is the best way to determine which bearings you're gonna buy. It's always a good way just to double check the part numbers. They're written on the insides of the races. The biggest difference is the Holden or the LM bearings have a smaller internal diameter on both cones as opposed to the Ford or the slimline bearings. They have a bigger internal diameter. That's the biggest difference. I actually have a Ford hub, um, but I've got the Holden bearings to fit the Holden actual shaft that we measured earlier. The Ford bearings tend to be on the bigger trailers, the 1500 kilo with the brakes. The Holden tends to be on the 750 kilo with the smaller axle. That's the biggest difference. And the biggest thing that's gonna kill these bearings is moisture entry, corrosion, lack of grease, all them sort of things you'll find pitting and spoiling on, on the rollers and on the races and also on the cups. Um, for me, for the price, I'm just going to change them anyway. All right, I've cleaned out that hub, all the grease that I can. Um, we just need to remove the old cups. Now, there's nothing too scientific about removing the cups. You just got to tap them out. They're not that tight. I'll just take a little bit of work for that out. And we just flip it over, do the same for the other side. Okay, we've both them cups are now out of the hub. Uh, we're gonna clean the hub as, as well as we can, get all the little residual grease out of there, get it really tidy and ready to fit the new cups. Now to fit the new cups, um, they're not that tight. Like I said, when I knocked them out, they're not that tight, but you'd rather not fit them with a punch like that. Um, if you can warm up the hub, stick it in the oven if you have to, or freeze the bearings, chuck them in the freezer, or both. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier to fit. You can use a little step plate uh, to knock them in or just a soft hammer. Once you've got the hub warm and the, and the bearings cold, it's a lot easier. You can put them in just as they are. Um, you just need to be a little bit careful not to burr the edges with them. Uh, if you're fitting them with a punch, make sure you use a soft one. All right, so we're ready to fit the cups. Uh, it's very cold this morning, so these are quite cold. And I've actually heated up the hub. It's just warm to the touch with a flame. You can put it in your oven. It might stink your house out with grease. Just be aware of that. We're going to install them facing up 
and out on both sides. Uh, I'm just going to tap them home with, I've got a 38mm deep impact socket here, and that's all I'm going to use just to tap it home. It fits quite nicely. Okay, cool. And obviously this one faces out as well, the smaller inboard one. Let's fit it in there and get a square. We'll just tap it home with the, uh, the uh, little socket. Oh, that socket's inch and a quarter. all the way home and that's all the way home we just need to fit the cone to this side and then the seal and then the cone to this side we want to we want to fill this entire cavity here with grease it's the only lubricant these bearings are going to get uh, their whole life so we want to make sure there's lots of grease we're going to pack heaps of grease in and uh, let's get started all right so we've got wheel bearing grease um, you basically get it anywhere in any form as long as it is designed to be in wheel bearings at normally high temperature, high speed, um, sort of medium load grease. And we're just gonna pack nice new clean gloves and we're just gonna pack the bearing as much as we can. We wanna get it all over the rollers and we wanna pack it in so that in a race, gets all the grease it possibly can. Like I said earlier, this is the only grease this bearing is ever really gonna get unless I pull them out and re-grease them. We wanna make sure that all that lubricant is in the bearing. You can buy bearing packers, um, specialized sort of tooling for packing bearings, but uh, just doing it by hand works just fine for me. Once you've got the two bearings as packed as possible, you want to get all that grease in. We'll fill the cavity in here with grease, and then we'll, we'll put this bearing in before we put the seal in, because you've got to get the, the bearing in first, then the seal, and the bearing will stay in there, and it'll sit in the housing. I'll pack these and we'll get going. Okay, so the bearings are fully packed. There's lots of grease in that cavity. I'm just gonna put the seal in the back. Now the standard seal that came out, is just a standard lip seal. You have this sort of concave area in here with the spring, and then you've got a, a, a seal here in the flat surface. That would be fitted that way with the flat surface out. These are marine bearings. So I've got the marine seal. You've got a, a cup of sorts. You've got a seal that sits inside, and then you have this stainless ring. They're designed to keep water out, um, obviously because you're, uh, you're using it as a boat trailer, it's going underwater. I prefer the other type, but this is this is the kit I could get, so that's what I've got. So all we've got to do with these ones, we've just got to fit the cup, and then the rubber piece, and, and the, the stainless shim to sit on top, and that sits against a, a shoulder on the axle. And it works just as well, um, it's just a little bit more annoying to fit. So we get it as square as we can. I've just got an inch and seven eighth socket here. I'm just gonna tap it home. Just like that, super easy. That also holds the bearing in as well now. And then this part is just gonna sit there. Nothing holds it in except for the shoulder on the, on the axle. That'll sit up against here and that'll stay up like that. Super easy. I can leave that out for now. We will fit the outboard bearing and then we'll go and slide the whole assembly onto the shaft and we'll, uh, we'll adjust it. All right, it's time to put it back on. I've put a bit of grease on the shaft. And I've cleaned up the seal area here with a bit of sandpaper and I've actually pushed the, the stainless shim for the marine seal on the shaft. Now all we need to do is grab our seal boot, stick it in the back of here so we don't forget it hold you on. We have a washer here, make sure we don't forget that. The grease on it. Stick that on. And the nut. Now what I like to do here is we'll put the wheel back on so we can spin it and we're going to tighten the nut by hand then we're going to tighten an extra quarter turn to seat the bearings, spin the wheel at least 10 times, back the nut off and then tighten it by hand and we'll install the cotter pin. Okay so the wheel's back on, the lug nuts are just snug tight, they're not torqued yet. Now we just want to tighten this by hand as far as we can. 
and then we'll just give it an extra quarter turn just to take those bearings nothing too too mad and we'll just get the wheel a few spins take those bearings if the nut becomes loose during this time like mine has you can just tighten it up a little bit more give it another quarter turn just because the bearings are seating we want them fully seated we're not going to put any preload on them but we are going to seat them cool now we know that they're seated we loosen the nut entirely Properly, and then we're just going to tighten it by hand, just snug by hand to the next cotter pin hole. If you can't get to the next hole, just back it off a little bit to get there. Cool, now we install the cotter pin. There's no real rules about bending these pins. Everyone has a different idea of how they want to do it. You can bend both. You can flip it in that way and bend just the one. As long as it doesn't interfere with the sort of rolling rotation of everything around it. I'm a big fan of bending two. Obviously it's always a good idea to take the trailer out for a test tow. You can come back and you can readjust if you want to. Make sure you, you basically want, you want no free play. You don't, you don't want preload either, but you don't want any sort of free play. It's got to be sort of nice. So maybe take your bike, your bike, <laughs> take your trailer for a test spin and just make sure there's no free play there after you've taken it for a tow. Obviously we want to fit the, the hubcap. I filled it with grease. It's going to be grease coming out everywhere, but that's good. It means we've got enough grease. Basically going to hydraulic it on a little bit. We'll just tap that on. Caps on. Drop the trailer down and torque these nuts. All right, now we're just going to torque up the wheel nuts. Um, these are half inch, so we're talking about 80 foot pounds. Uh, if you get the 716, somewhere around that 70 foot pounds, a little bit lower for the 716 studs. Um, we chopped the wheel because it's going to roll. We've got these nice new bearings, they're that good, it's going to roll. We just want to talk them up. We just want to talk them in a star pattern just to make sure that they're tightened evenly so everything's sitting nicely. So take it for a test tow, pick it up again and just, just check that there's no free play there that we haven't seated the bearings properly or there's, there's other issues. And uh, yeah, just maintain them and you'll be right. Thanks for watching.